So... Another, another person came out whose name is Life of Fussy. That's that's Life of Fussy with one F in the middle. And uh, he literally just created his TikTok account not too long ago, like some around. This is the first video that he posted yesterday. It says, I decided to share my story since tons of lovers are coming forward about their experiences with James. There's another video up in the video proof. And I guess what you can see is all of his TikTok videos that talks about his experience with James and he has proof of everything that went down and he explains everything in detail as to what happened. So I'm going to bring that to you in just a few short moments. Uh, we did develop a streak. I know three isn't a lot, but it does show to prove that we were snapchat each other back and forth for a bit. And at this time, we were actually on really good terms. I did not think he was going to do anything stupid. So anyways, we started talking again at three in the morning, and we were snapping each other. I sent him a shirtless picture, and it was literally just me working out at home. If you know me, I literally post that shit on my story all the time. It's quite obvious that he was pressuring me to sending him photos. After doing what he said, he questioned my confidence. I just want to let you guys know that that's not my intention. And this is exactly why I created a separate TikTok and Twitter account. It was because I didn't want to bring this energy onto my main platforms. I'm simply sharing my story because a lot of victims are coming forward on Twitter. I've had so many requests from people that I'm close with saying, Oh, you should talk about it. You should tell people about it, blah, blah, blah. A lot of my close friends and people who were there with me at the time, um, they knew exactly how I felt and how this impacted me. So they were telling me like, yo, maybe it's time for you to share your story, even though it's been a year and a half, you know, like you should still share it. If I really wanted to cloud chase, I would have shared my story the next day when this was all fresh during the whole Tati and Sam scandal. But I decided to shut the fuck up because I didn't want to create a whole new scandal at the time. I'm speaking now now because there's a lot of other people coming forward and I guess it's the right time. Um, So before anybody since people are saying that I set James Charles up, here's a conversation between me and my older brother. So on May 24th, I messaged him saying James Charles hit me up. And he goes, all oh, that weirdo about what? So I started to show him our conversation on Instagram. Um, there was more to the conversation, but it wasn't anything bad, so I don't really need to share that. But I also showed him that he added me on Snapchat, as you can see. And after that, we didn't really talk about it. So as you guys can see here, May 25th, 2019, I gave a call to my cousin, Sabrina, and I just told her that me and James started talking. This same day, we were supposed to go to a family event, and I told her, don't talk about the James Charles thinking at all. And she goes, obviously not, I got you. And I'm like, don't mention it at all because it's a low-key thing for now. So when I meant low-key thing, that means me and him were like starting to build a relationship when we just started talking, but I want to keep it low-key. When you open your conversation between a verified person and you, the star disappears, so please educate yourself. starts off as hi baby mind you we were on the phone at this time so after i hung up the phone this conversation was still here anyways i'm on video call with him and i'm like oh why aren't you talking and he goes oh i have to text i can't talk which is obviously very weird after this i hung up because i told him i heard somebody and he's like okay anyways we hopped on video call again i told him i heard my parents wake up and he goes oh can't you go to the bathroom where your family can't walk in lol i told him it's risky it's really late like you know my parents are awake they're gonna be like why are you in the bathroom so he goes go to the bathroom where your family can't walk in so I said, okay, you know what? Let me just see, like, I'll go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and then I walked out because I got scared. Like I was hesitant. 
And then he kept asking me, go back to the bathroom. And I was like, my parents are awake. And he's like, oh, oh, I know. He's like, why don't you just go to the bathroom and call me so your family can't walk in? And he just kept repeating that over and over. So for those who are confused, I hope this clears this up for you guys. All right, guys, so I've decided that I want to talk about the incident. And I'm going to tell you guys the exact full story since a lot of you guys are coming at me. You guys seem very confused, so here's the full story. So basically, when James was getting cancelled for the whole Tati Westbrook and Sam Cook situation, I decided to reach out to him via Instagram DMs. I don't vividly remember what I said to him, but um, I did say something like, if you need to talk to somebody since you're experiencing all this, like you can definitely talk to me about it. I also added that I was single. Anyway, so James responds to my DMs and he goes, he's not really looking for anything, but I'm cute. So I was like, okay, cool. As a normal person would do, I was like, here's my number if you change your mind. Then he told me to send a video of me introducing myself, so I did. So right after that, he asked me for my Snapchat and I gave it to him, so we added So basically we started talking on Snapchat and it didn't seem like he had any weird intentions. Like, we were getting to know each other and he seemed pretty genuine and he was actually really nice, so... Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna make a part two. But yeah. Alright, so the first two days passed by, whatever, and the third day is when things started to get a little weird. Um, remember, he said that he wasn't looking for anything, right? So anyways, later on during that day, I went to the gym and I posted a snap of me flexing. And he responded to my story saying that big. So I was like, uh, my phone. So I found a little odd that he started calling me baby and daddy because it's like, you don't call your friends that, right? Anyways, I slid that under the rug and I was like, you know what? Like, I don't care. Because I, I, I was looking to talk to somebody. So he called me that and I was like, so I was like, yay. Like, he, he likes me. So anyways, my best friend comes and she picks me up and she goes, oh, let's go to the bar. So I was like, okay. Um, and she, if you ask her, she'll literally tell you I was glued to my phone the whole time. We're having some life conversations and my best friend was getting mad because she's like, oh, you're supposed to be spending time with me and not talking to James. So after my best friend got upset with me, she decided to drop me home and um, me and James just continued talking. I'm going to do a part three because I'm running out of time. Anyways, my manager gives me a call and she tells me she wants me to come to work. So I go to work for like a few hours and I come home around 2.45 a.m. And then I realized that I forgot to respond to James' messages, so I was like, oh fuck. So I messaged him, we're having a conversation on Snap, and he starts getting a little flirty, and I was like, let's just take it slow, but obviously he didn't want it. Anyways, he goes, um, she sent me a shirtless picture, and I was like, okay, whatever, I don't care, because I post that shit on my story, you know? So then he starts going, oh, send me pictures of uh, your boxers, show me what you're wearing. And then he goes, let me see your armpits, and I was like, what? What? I didn't want to lose the opportunity to talk to him, so I just did what he said, because like, I was still shocked that he messaged me, you know? So anyways, um, he screenshots a photo that I sent him and I was like, yo, why the fuck are you screenshotting my shit? And he goes, oh, it's not like I'm going to do anything with it. And I'm like, if you're not going to do anything with it, why are you screenshotting it? We're running out of time, so I'm going to post a part five or four. So a lot of you guys are forgetting the fact that I said, um, like I mentioned to him that I have anxiety. Um, I told him I got out of a toxic relationship and I even told him that I, that I had depression. So he knew I was vulnerable. So obviously my vulnerable ass, um, I had to go with whatever he said because I didn't know what to do. I honestly didn't know what to do. I was so confused. I was just, I didn't know what to do. So at this point, I did start to suspect that he was um, using me for my news because going back to the vulnerable, me being vulnerable and me being in a toxic relationship, he didn't care about that. And I told him about my anxiety too and he didn't care. So anyways, um, I started to feel like he was using me and I was like, you know what, I'm going to document this shit because if I talk to anybody about it, they're not going to believe me. They're going to see your lie. Well, for you guys that are saying I'm cloud chasing, if I was cloud chasing, I would have documented every conversation we had. Since we're running out of time, I'm going to create a part six. I'm going to connect the puzzles for you guys because you guys are all confused. But I will prove to you guys right now that I didn't delete any messages. If you pause over here, it says 3.56 a.m., okay? So anyways, I'm just sitting there and I'm just really, really anxious and scared. And then he decides to video call me. As you can see, just wait. See, he video calls me. So after our call ended, and as you can see on the top, it says 3.59 a.m. That literally shows that I didn't delete any messages because he literally says that he can't talk, but he could text. Delete there. Now I'll tell you the... Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Conversation that we had on the phone. If you pause over here, it says 3.56 say I'm okay so anyways I'm just sitting there and I'm just really really anyways um I hope I cleared that part up for you guys because there was like 500 of you people saying that I deleted my messages when I didn't and I just proved that I did so I noticed that when I didn't want to do what he said 
he started to give me attitude and I told him, I literally said to him, I'm tired, I need to sleep. It's like 4 a.m. and I said that my parents are going to wake up, I need to sleep. And he didn't care, like he just, he kept spraying out under the rug, he's like, go to the bathroom, do this, do that. And when I didn't do what he wanted, he wanted to give me a whole lot of attitude because I didn't want to do what he wanted. Like, do you not have respect? So anyways, now I'm sitting there vulnerable and anxious and I'm like, now I fucked up my chance with this person and I felt like crap. After telling him no and that I want to go to bed, he started to manipulate me and he started to give me attitude and he made me feel really bad. Anyways, I went to bed and I woke up the next day and I tried to message him and it said that he deleted me. So I felt used. We're running out of time, so I'm gonna do a part seven or part eight, I don't know. Anyways, um, I hope I cleared that part out for you guys because regardless of However long it took for me to come out with this story, it does not matter. I can speak about it 10 years down the road. That does not matter. The point is, what he did was wrong. As you guys can see, he was giving me attitude for not sending him nudes. And then I woke up unfriended, which I found disrespectful. He even questioned my confidence, which was even more disrespectful because you never question somebody's confidence. After that, I sent him a long-ass paragraph on Instagram, and he told me I was overwhelming him when he overwhelmed me. Regardless of however long it took for me to come out with this story, it does not matter. I can speak about it 10 years later. Now, I know what some of you James Charles stands are going to say, that he's still cl a cloud chaser, but he is not. I think this guy has all of the evidence that he is telling with his side of the story. And as soon as James Charles makes a video, very, very soon. And I am really sure of it. Because he knows he sees this. He knows. He knows he sees all of Yuzi's TikToks. <laughs> he knows. By the time James Charles makes a video on it on on his side of story which should be uh, up hopefully soon because the statement he gave didn't have the evidence that needs to be proved that James Charles didn't actually do any of these things to this guy and the last guy he made a video on like not too long ago Really. So, this is the problem with James Charles again. Like, he keeps talking to people who are minors. And I just don't like the idea that someone as powerful as James Charles would just go after somebody's vulnerable ass like this. I mean, this Uzi guy must be really, really shaking and vulnerable because of the fact that James Charles... Oh my god. It is so hard to explain how I feel about James Charles because of the fact that he went after so many guys. He... I don't know if I should call him predator, a sexual predator, but if more men come out in the future about James Charles, which will likely happen, James Charles' his career will be over sooner before he turns 35. I guarantee it. Okay, so... This guy just created his Twitter account. And, uh, you know, he posted a tweet to his video, which I'll link in the, in the description below if I haven't already. Which means you'll, that you'll see it in the description below, a link to his video explaining his entire story in regards to what James Charles did to him. So... And he has made a tweet thread about 
about it on Twitter as well. Which basically shows all of the evidence that James Charles did to him, which I just don't understand how James Charles keeps doing this. Again, like I don't know if he has the tendency to, to like try to make people's experiences uncomfortable, especially when when the people's experiences that James Charles had are guys, most likely. It's just really troubling that I have to that anyone has to witness how horrible they they feel when it comes to James Charles preying on people like Uzi it's just really disgusting to say the least I just don't know why James Charles cannot keep away from keep it keep away from people like I just don't understand how much power he has to keep doing this. So basically we started talking for a little and he was actually a very nice person for the first few days. He told me he wasn't looking for anything until he started calling me daddy and babe. And there's a screenshot of where James Charles probably blocked him, I guess. I guess that's how uh, Instagram works. Just in case people think I'm lying about this, here's a video on my record recorder and it's not me because nobody believed we started talking. Ew. <laughs> here's him snapping me to trying to video call me. He was begging me to dis dis do disgusting things for him on video call. Oh. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty, pretty disgusting of James Charles to do. And then people like this would blame somebody for cloud chasing, which again, he is not cloud chasing. I mean, you are literally defending James Charles. You are accusing a victim of James Charles for telling a story, which you should be ashamed of yourself for doing so. If you're not really defending him, but you are like attacking Uzi, then you are literally defending him. Stupid. So what are my entire thoughts on this? Well, for starters, I, I think James Charles, he really, really needs to lay off what he's doing because what he's doing is really unacceptable and frankly I don't know if I really want to believe him after all of this so I hope James Charles comes out with a response as soon as possible because this should not go on any longer if he keeps doing this to many guys then you know his career will actually be over before he turns 35 but in the future his career will be over by 35 
if he continues to keep this up. You know? Because he can't live like this for the rest of his life. He can't keep replying to men every single time. And sexualizing them in that kind of way. He needs to be very careful when he talks to minors. <sighs> I'm just sick of this. I just am. And if you want to go and take a look at Life of Uzi's video here for yourself, if you don't want to hear, if you don't want to hear it from me, then you you know where to go to because it's already in the description below.